Carlos Diaz and welcome back to another video everybody. I am in the La Puente Nature Reserve and it is quite a windy day. Uh, I came up here yesterday to do some macro photography. I'll talk about this little thing here in a second. I'm not sure why I didn't have any SD cards in my bag. Not for this camera that I'm filming on and not for the camera that I'm shooting on for the macro photography and they were all in my truck down below. I'm at about a thousand feet of elevation, not that high, um, which is about 400 and some odd meters, I guess. And I'm not sure why I didn't have an SD card, but point being, I came back today. Yesterday was a pretty sunny day, it was a nice day. Today, it's on and off raining. I don't mind the clouds. I think it provides good, nice, soft light for what I'm doing here today, but it's super windy. And being super windy for macro photography, you need stuff to be sharp. And in order for it to be sharp, whoa, we need to make sure that there's no camera shake. And we want to make certain that the subject isn't shaking either. All of the vegetation and all the things I thought I was going to shoot macro on today is pretty much not something I can do just because there's just way too much movement. So I got a plan B. I'm not giving up here. I'm going to go low to the ground. I found some snails palaces, meaning just their shells. They've evacuated them and I'm going to shoot those and then I'll just find some unique things to shoot. And that's the beauty of macro photography. It's really up close photography. And in the end, if we can get a pretty sharp image, I'll just be happy with the images that I do get because this is all a learning experience all the time, just trying new things, trying to be creative. Speaking of creativity, I have the Canon EOS R here. I have an adapter EF to R mount so I can attach my extension tubes or macro tubes, talk more about those in a second. Then I wanted to use my vintage 100 millimeter FD 2.8 Canon lens on here as well. With that, I'm using a photo diox um, EF to FD mount. And I found out from photo diox that I actually could have purchased their RF straight to FD mount, but that'll be for another day. That'll make this Frankenstein feature here a little less overwhelming. But nonetheless, in order to use these macro tubes, which are EF mount macro tubes, I had to utilize what I actually utilize here. So hopefully all that makes sense. But nonetheless, why would you use macro tubes? So if you actually have a macro lens, the ability to get closer to your subject is that much more. For example, this lens is 100 millimeters, as I said before. Its minimum focal distance is one meter. So that's about this far. Camera, subject, this far, one meter. By putting these macro tubes on, that allows me to get that much closer and still get focus. Now, if you're at razor sharp 1.2, 1.8, 2.8, you're going to have to stack images. I'm not gonna do that here today. I'm just looking for a segment of an image to crop in and just be crystal clear and sharp. That's my focus here today, no pun intended. So for example, I use this website. I actually made a shortcut on my phone to it. It's called cambridgecolor.com, but essentially it has a little calculator and it's an extension tube calculator. And for example, one of the extension tubes on here is 31 millimeters. So for example, if I take 31 millimeters as the extension amount, and then my focal length is 100 millimeters, and my native magnification is 0.12, and then it'll tell you your new magnification and also the distance by which you can move your camera closer to the subject. So for example, let's do one thing. So on this calculator, we're gonna zero out the extension amount. My focal length is still 100 millimeters and the native magnification is 0.12 times. So if you look down below, it's still at 0.12 times and then the closest focusing distance that you can get to your subject is 104, sorry, 1,045 0.3 millimeters. Now, if you add in an extension tube, we'll just add in the one, the 31 millimeter, even though I have three on here. The 31 millimeters, if we add it in and calculate, now you're going from the number I previously mentioned, which was 1,045, I believe, to almost half or a little bit less or a little bit more than half 
and that's 475.6 millimeters. So I can get that much closer to my subject. By getting that much closer to my subject, I can get that much more macro so I can get a nice sharp image of the intricacies of the subject that I'm trying to focus on. So one last thing, I have all three macro tubes on here because I want to get that much closer to the subject. There are 31 millimeters, 21 millimeters, and 13 millimeters. So that's what? 65 millimeters if I'm doing my math right. So if we go back, so if we go back into the app, and remember the original was I think a thousand and forty five millimeters that I could get to the subject close to the subject and so if I calculate this so it's now 406.9 millimeters we'll call it 407 millimeters that I can get close to my subject I used to be about a meter away from the camera if the camera was my subject now I can be about half and a little bit more so I can be right about here to the subject that means and that allows you to get that much closer to your subject and get some unique shots and some perspectives of things that you may not necessarily normally be looking at. That's what macro tubes are all about. I just challenged myself by putting a vintage lens on this Canon ESR and now I'm going to go ahead and find something to shoot. I think what I'm going to shoot first is what I rolled up upon earlier and I gathered a few of these snail shells that were around here. We're gonna focus on those. Let's see what we can get down below. All right, hopefully you can see me. I'm getting down and dirty. Hopefully there's no snakes around here. I essentially can get about 15 inches away from this subject. Now, hand holding is probably not the best thing in the world because I can't have any shake in order for things to be on point and sharp. I'm gonna try and I'm gonna shoot my first one off. I'm gonna get to about 125th that'll help me a little bit with my shake, but macro photography, I do have my tripod and I'm going to incorporate it here in a sec, but let's go ahead and give this a go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it up to 2.8 on this 100 millimeter lens. Sometimes you just gotta move in and out. That's what macro photography is. And what's cool about the Canon ESR, it has my manual focus peaking. So what that means is I'm getting a lot of red little dots on the subject. And it kind of tells me I'm in focus in certain spots. Remember I'm at 2.8, so not everything's gonna be in focus. I'm going to go ahead and take an image of the darker snail shell. Snail shell. Say that ten times fast. Snail shell. Snail shell. All right. I feel like that's pretty good. All right. That didn't turn out too bad. So if you want a super sharp image from front to back, the idea would be here to focus stack. And in order to focus stack, I would need it on the tripod and I would need to change my focus orientation or location every time I shot a bunch of images. We're not gonna do that here today. That's definitely for another day. I definitely wanna come out and do that. I said definitely way too many times. But you know what I'm saying. I guess I should do one on the tripod because I said I'd do one on the tripod. So let's do that. Okay. I'm focusing on the left side of the shell itself. And let me zoom back out. Man, there's a lot of wind. I'm gonna wait for the wind to go down a little bit. That's good. Take advantage of that. Let me zoom in on that. Feels like a very similar shot, but I'm really liking the striations and the things that and the details that I'm getting in this image and on the actual shell. Okay, let's go find something else to shoot. I really want to shoot one of these pretty little wildflowers that were along this path that I came down. I feel like it's hidden off the path and between all of this brush that even when the wind comes across that I'm going to be able to get the shot somewhat still even though there's still a lot of wind I feel like it's not moving at all right now 
and I probably should just be quiet and take the shot. All right, I'm getting some really pretty sun coming through the flower now, and um, yeah, I'm actually liking this shot. Although I keep saying to shoot it and I'm coming back to the camera and it's starting to get windy again, but I'm just gonna have to deal with it. I'm gonna sit here as long as it takes. Hopefully that sun will last and I'll be able to get a little bit. I'm only, I'm only razor sharp in a real small section, but that's what it's all about. That's what macro photography is about. It's pretty. It's moving, so I have time, but all right, all right, let's go. If I knew my flowers, I'd tell you what it is. If I knew my flowers, it's, I don't know, maybe it's a weed for all I know. It's moving around now, as you can see, and maybe it's just telling me you should have shot me earlier when I was posing, but we'll get it. We'll get it. Some semblance of it, even if it's a blurry shot. I've got my shutter release cable here, ready to go. Um, I would say I'm dead on focus, but moving in and out of frame. And I lost that nice little piece of sun that was filtering through. Maybe it'll open up again. Those clouds are starting to cover it once more, but it's okay. I mean, there are just sections of it that are on point. Uh, it's moving around. So hopefully something came out there, something that was super sharp. Again, I'm gonna probably crop these images in down to almost abstract images. And the idea is just to get down into a macro level that you wouldn't normally be able to get with just a regular lens. Now, if I wanted to get even closer, and I've done this before with my, uh, what is it, 75 to 300, and threw on these macro tubes, whoo, deliciousness. And I'll try that some other time. I just wanted to throw this vintage 100 millimeter FD 2.8 lens on here, and it's been fun. It's been fun, especially, especially once I got going. I think initially the wind and everything, and all the movement, started to get me down a little bit but I'm good I'm feeling good about it hope you're having fun with me I know I'm not completely in frame and while it's really windy I would challenge you to go out and be creative with your photography if you're a portrait photographer or you're a landscape photographer or you're a seascape photographer I would challenge you especially if you're in a creative rut to come out and do some macro photography it's a lot of fun and really if you talk about this get up here um, this vintage lens, if you want to get a vintage lens, and vintage lens, especially Canons, are very affordable. This is about a $50 to $75 lens, wherever you might find it, 100 millimeter, 2.8, so super cool lens. Um, the adapter that I got was about, I think, $35 to $40, somewhere in there, and your macro tubes are going to run you about $30. Bucks. So all in all, for, for about $100 bucks or a little more, a little less, depending on what you buy and what... Uh, what value you're looking for, you can get this type of setup for far less than an actual really high level macro lens. So especially if you just wanna go out and try it out, all you need to do is adapt a lens to one of these macro tubes and you're good to go. Just find the one that fits your format of camera, style of camera, uh, body type of camera, uh, type of camera, uh, manufacturer of camera, camera manufacturer. <laughs> I'm just goofy out here. All right, so I moved on to a new location. Um, I'm essentially under these power lines that really run from, who knows, to Arizona, to the northern parts of California and beyond. But this is one of the bases here on this trail, and I just wanted to really zero in on one of these bolts. I think you see these right here that I'm pointing at. So I'm gonna just try to get, again, about a 15 inch distance. Sometimes you just need to keep your focus static and breathe in and out with your lens with your lens until you get to a point where something is razor sharp. Again, we're at 100 millimeters, so I'm really just trying to get specific pieces. Oh, that looks really good. And this isn't moving at all, so this is a great subject to test this on. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in and try to get razor sharp. Oh yeah, the granules. This looks really cool. I'm gonna shoot that shot. Yeah, you can see the ridges of the actual bolt and the screw on this steel support. Really cool. I mean, these are just unique shots and good ways to just practice your macro photography. I mean, we're getting pretty nitpicky here. 
Uh, but you just you, you just want a nice image when you get these back in the computer and as you're looking at them you want to go gosh I wish that was sharper and just remember you have a very shallow depth of field so only so much of your object will be in focus. Please give me a like if you liked any part of this video. I'd appreciate it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Ring the bell for new videos just like this one and much, much more. I love you guys. Thanks for hanging out. Peace.